Hello everyone, if you're new to the channel, please start from the first video of the playlist, then you'll be better able to understand what exactly is going on. In the previous video, we created till here, adding this frosted container effect. And in this video, we're going to create the six knobs, uh, selecting which will change the theme of the website, as you can see over here. All right, now let's come to the models folder and create a new file named color underscore model dot dot. Inside the color model or dart file, we'll let's create a color model and then give it a string of SVG path. Then we'll give it a gradient and a color. Now let's quickly create the constructor. Now this SVG path is used to store the absolute path of the image. The gradient is the gradient that you can see in the background of the website. And pressing these knobs will change the gradient. So that is why we're adding them. Now this color is the color of the knob as you can see over here. These knobs have a different color and the gradient of the background is a bit different. All right. So now let's come to the data.dart file and create a list of the type color model. And let's give it a name of color palette. I'll create the first model, which will be the color model. Again, let's give it a color of color start yellow. And in the gradient, let's add a linear gradient, give it some colors. Colors dot yellow accent and colors dot deep orange. Now I want it to begin from alignment dot bottom left. And I want it to end on alignment dot top right. Now one other property is left, which is the SVG path. Now again, in the previous, uh, just now I have told you that SVG path is the path of the image. Now I did this cloud red image, which is uh, again available in the images folder. I've shown in the previous video how you can create multiple images of the cloud. So I won't be showing that again in this video. So now I'll quickly paste all the other elements of the list. Now let's come to the home page. And inside this frosted widget, now we need to add a child to this widget, right? So I'll go inside the frosted widget file and create a final widget. And uh, let's keep it nullable as well. I'll give it a name of child G. So in the constructor, let's add it. And then going to the bottom into this container, I'll add the child property. I'll give child is equal to child g. All right. Now back up to our home page or dart file. Let's test it that it is working. Right. So I'll just track down this frosted widget in which we need to add that color palette. Give it a child g property. Give it a center and then the child. And inside the text, let's write center. So now that we have verified that it is working completely fine, let's remove it and add another widget named wrap. Let's give it a property of children. Now what this wrap widget basically does it, it allows us to have a responsive layout. Basically imagine that you have three children in a row. Now, if you increase the width of the children and now you're only able to fit two children in a row, the third one will automatically push to the next row. All right, so this is what the wrap widget does. It gives us a responsive layout. Now let's write all the children's inside using list.generate. Let's give it a length of color palette.length. And in the index, we'll use custom button, right? As I've explained earlier as well, using this custom button, we can create these knobs. On the on press right now, I'll keep it empty. And let's remove the cons from the top because it was giving us some errors. So now I'll give the animate property to true and is 3D to true as well. Now animate property allows the button to go up or down and is 3D is what is supplying that border uh, like box shadow, that white portion as you can see on the screen. All right. So now what I'll do is I'll give it a border radius of 100 and give it a height of 52 and the width should also be same as 52. The point to remember is whenever you're using the animate property as a code to true of the custom button, you have to give it a height. Now let's give it a shadow color of white. As you can see on the original website, we have the shadow color to white. Let's also add the background color, which we can again fetch from color palette index dot color. 
now let's hit save and see what we have now you can see that all the children are in a single row right one child is occupying a single row why is that uh, <laughs> because of an error of mine as well uh, in the custom button package you can see that i have added uh, center in that right but i have updated the package recently so what you can do is go inside your pubspec.yaml file and upgrade the package version to 0.03 and it should fix that now let's just come, uh, go and run flutter pub get okay now as you can see in this version i have removed the center from this container which has fixed that bug now let's hot reload the website and see what we are having all right so the package has been updated now you can see what is happening at the wrap widget right now these four children were able to fit in the first line itself so what it did was it shifted the next two widgets in the next line right this is the use case of the wrap widget now if i increased the width by 50 more as you can see that now only two children are able to fit in a row so i'll push the next children downward and next children downward this is how the wrap widget works so i quickly press undo now what i'll do is i'll add some margin i need three widgets in a line right i'll give it a margin of a good 10 okay so this is being done now we have three children in a single row so now we also need to center it i'll try two approaches to center it one is just using the center <laughs> okay that is working if the center property wouldn't work then i would use a, a column and then i would do it main axis alignment dot center but the center is working pretty fine now what we need to do is now we need to uh, check which knob will be selected by default and according to that change the gradient of the background as well now if we see closely the gradient of the background is a static property we need to make it dynamic also we need to make uh, this svg picture dynamic as well so what i'll do is in the provider current state dot dot i'll create a gradient i'll give it a name of bg gradient and give it a default value So we have created a default gradient. Now we can use this default gradient inside our home page. Need to remove this cons from here and it would work the exact same way. Okay. We also need to change the selected cloud as well. Uh, we need to create a variable for this as well. Or what we can do is we don't need to create two variables in current state or that will create a single variable that will store the index of the list. In the dot file, we have all the properties, right? The color model and uh, the gradient with it, the color the gradient, the SVG path, all are in a single instance. So if we just save the index of this element, we can simply access all these files, right? So I'll just uh, by default, I'll select the second knob. Okay. And in the home page to dart, what I'll do is I'll use the color palette list and the index we are saving in the current state dot dart and dot gradient is what we have to use. Right. And over here is color palette and then current state dot knob selected dot SVG path. Now, if we refresh it, it is working very fine. Okay, so now we have to make this knobs functional as well. That by pressing any single knob, it should change the gradient and the button should be pressed as well. All right. So for that, we'll create a new function in the current state or dart file, which would basically change the gradient. I'll give it the name of change gradient. It should take an index and and then it should update the index accordingly and call notify listener as well. So in the home page dot what we have to do is we'll go to this on pressed and call this with the index. So now if we click any button the gradient is actually changing but we are not rebuilding the 
gradient right we're not rebuilding the gradient in the cloud so that is what we're going to do right now if you remember we used selector in a previous video so that is what we're going to use now because selector is more efficient right we have to give the selector type uh, which type is it which type uh, which class is it using and what is the property that will data type of the property that when modified will rebuild this widget or you can simply use a consumer widget as well both are completely fine so i'll add provider dot norm selected and inside over here we have the builder it takes context and then i don't need these both properties and i will return okay so let's see yes you can see that this is working completely fine we are still to make the buttons disabled that is left right and we also need to rebuild this cloud as well we'll use the same selector only we'll again use the selector okay so now if we press yellow you can see the cloud is also changed the background is also changed now the only thing left to do is to make the buttons disabled now if you remember in the previous video we used a property called pressed I need to compare it with the current state dot knob selected. If the knob selected is equal to is equal to index, then it means the button is selected, right? The button is pressed. Else the button is not pressed. Simple. As you can see that by default this button is selected because this is the color that we are, this is the gradient that we're seeing in the background. Now if we select this. Okay, now you see what is happening. The, the buttons are working fine, but they are also not being rebuilt, right? So we also need to rebuild these buttons as well. So how are we going to use it? So we will use the same selector over here as well. All right, or I can simply wrap these in consumer. So let's wrap this in consumer for the time being. I'll give you a good understanding of what is happening. How you can use consumer and selector both. The only difference between consumer and selector is basically whenever notify listener is called consumer is rebuilt again and again, whereas selector checks if the variable that is looking for changes in value, then it will rebuild the children widgets. So now, as you can see, the buttons are animating properly as well. So that's all for this video. In the next video, I'll uh, will add on to this and create a home screen of the application. So I'll see you in the next one.